Indian Muslim Hindu polarization permeates Mer American diaspora. Recent violent confrontations between some Hindus and Muslims in the past few months in the United States and the United Kingdom have raised the concern that India's religious and political fight is slowly making its way into the diaspora communities. During an August march commemorating India's Independence Day, a bulldozer, a symbol of the collective punishment and Muslim oppression in India, was seen rolling down the streets of Edison, New Jersey. Meanwhile, a verbal clash occurred in Anaheim, California, between people celebrating Indian independence and people who showed up to protest against the violence that Muslims face in India. According to Varun Soni, Dean of Religious Life at the University of Southern California, or USC, which has over 2,000 Indian students, Hindu nationalism has divided the Indian diaspora in the same way that the presidency of Donald Trump was, has polarized the United States. On the other hand, a spokesperson for the Coalition of Hindus in North America, Pushpita Prashad, said that her group has been counseling youthful Hindu Americans who lost their friends as they refused to, quote, take sides on these battles emanating from India. Quote, if they don't take sides or don't have an opinion, it's automatically assumed that they're Hindu nationalists. Um, Prashad said, their country of origin and their religion is held against them. Others like, Zah Zah excuse me, others like Safar Sadiqi from Minnesota are trying to build understanding amongst the diaspora using interfaith assemblies. He has put together a group of Minnesotans of Indian origins, including Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, Christians, and atheists who meet for monthly potlucks to foster conversation, connections, and understanding. We were included? Yes. Oh my God. I was like another interfaith group that is about as long as we have belief, we could get along. As long as we share some sort of a faith, like as long as we're not heathens. But no, this is progress. Guys, to bring communities together, they have acknowledging us, the existence of atheists. I love this. Thank you. I appreciate it. that was the highlight of the story. I, all this civil war between Hindus and Muslims. I don't care about that. I just I just enjoyed the fact that atheists were included in something, right? So thank you for, <laughs> but yeah, go on. I so I thought this was important to talk about because so we have discussed recently a lot of the communal violence that happened in um, how do you pronounce it, Leicester, in the United Kingdom. And yes. some of that was influenced or people say was influenced by Hindu nationalism. Although my opinion on the Lester violence was that it was the Muslims driving a lot of it because what they were doing in comparison to the that. reports. No, oh, yeah. literally in, 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 oh. in the Lester incident, there were various incidents that were perpetuated by people on either side of this Hindu Muslim quote unquote divide. Right. Okay. If we took a tally, on column was like, okay, what the Muslims did on one side, what the Hindus did on one side, based on the reporting that I read, there would be more stuff that the Muslims did in that back and forth than what the Hindus did. In terms of what I read and what was reported, I think one side was perpetuating more. My understanding, okay. What I did see from the Hindu side was there were some hindu funness to it. It gave me that flavor. I'm sorry, but Dry Shri Ram is like that kind of dog whistle nowadays. That's where we're at. Anyways, so that incident in Leicester in the UK brought a lot of tension to this issue of having this communalism that's happening in India that has been greatly exacerbated over the past almost 10 years and is now at the forefront in seemingly being felt in other places in the world. And one of the incidents of this that shocked me, so in New Jersey, there is a city called Edison. And New Jersey has one of the largest populations of South Asians in the United States. This town in Edison has a huge Indian American population. And so they were having a giant festival for Indian independence. And at this festival, one of the things that was involved like in this parade was a bulldozer which is shocking to me because if you're familiar with what's been going on in India, especially throughout this past year, 
is that in incidences of the particularly what happened in Cargon, like when people are accused of communal violence, there are state apparatuses that will come in and literally just demolish someone's home in a bulldozer in complete absence of the law to the fact that the Supreme Court has ordered that it must stop, it's continued anyways. It's a form of collective punishment and yeah, complete disregard for like any standard of law and practice and it's blatantly illegal in many of the specific incidences that have happened. So to see that symbol of in this fair, in this parade in an American context is like, oh wow, like that's I don't know that that doesn't happen by accident right it's not like you just have a bulldozer involved in this form of parade just like by accident there was this other incident that happened in anaheim where people started to start screaming at each other it was a confrontation between protesters over these issues and so it's interesting to see like the the influence of these things happening otherwise and in these articles that i was reading about this it was um important to think about how this affects like everyday Hindu Americans in particular, because they are essential in many cases being asked to like clarify their politics on things right away. Like if they are not like, what side are you on? Blah, blah, blah. And I can see how that could be a very uncomfortable experience for a lot of people. And then if they're not on quote unquote the right side, or maybe they have an opinion on something that's just slightly more right leaning, being automatically painted as a Hindu nationalist because of that, I don't think is fair. Like I know ex-Muslims who have opinions on like the CAA that goes against the dominant opinion. And because of simply their opinion on CAA, they're painted as a right winger and like a Hindutva sympathizer. And they're like, no, I just have a differing opinion on this one policy that doesn't make me a Hindu nationalist or on their side. So I don't know. I think it's interesting to think about how this must be affecting people abroad. Armin, what do you think? No, yeah, I don't have any extra points. I think you covered it very well. But Oxymoron has a study that you might be interested in, saying there's a Henry Jackson report on Lester's tomorrow, arguably pro Hindutva, but still very detailed. So that would be interesting if you want to look that at would that. be very interesting. The Henry Jackson Society is very right leaning. So I'm very curious to see what comes out. Oxymoron is saying, why should the bulldozer be illegal? Are you serious, Oxymoron? Even by like normal right leaning people standards, so many instances of the bulldozer situation is patently illegal. Where they like issue the notice that the that the um, that the house is going to be demolished because it's an illegal construction, even though it was constructed under various government schemes of building housing. And then the 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 it happens within a time frame that is illegal because there has to be responses to it in the court, not to mention the fact that the person that the notice is addressed to is not actually the owner of the house that or the property that then goes on to be demolished. Like at every step of the way, in many of these instances, there's just nothing about it that follows even the own rules of the government. So... That's a whole different story. But, um, yeah, I don't know, Armin, what do you think about people being maybe overzealousness of people painting people as Hindu nationalists? Like, is there overcorrection going on? There will always be overcorrection, okay? there When there's correction, there will always be overcorrection, okay? The responsible thing to do is, so here's the thing. When there's overcorrection, a lot of people who hate the actual correction will use the overcorrection as a way to stop the correction. We use this, they cite the overcorrection to try to stop the whole correction. Okay? You know what I mean? There's a good movement going on. It makes mistakes. People who don't like the movement will point the mistakes to shut the whole thing down. Okay? Responsible people will just attack the overcorrection while supporting the correction. Mm -hmm. yeah. I saw a response to an article about this in the Associated Press and another article in the Huffington Post that, well, I mean, they particularly didn't like the Huffington Post thing because it highlighted Professor Avi, Aubrey Trusky, which is like a whole other situation. But they, the Hindu American Foundation was contesting that this narrative of 
this polarization, quote unquote, seeping into American politics is racist and Hindu phobic. What do you think about that? Which part is Hindu phobic? Sorry, say that again. So the the language that the Associated Press used in their title to talk about this, they basically said um, Indian political polarization is seeping into the American diaspora or something like that. And said, oh my God, if you said this about any other immigrant population and it's seeping into American politics, like this is racist and Hindu phobic. Is see well, I mean, other things are seeping. Why is that would it be Islamophobic for us to say that a lot of in Islamic culture is seeping into Europe? Okay, so I think it would be over okay, so here's what's not happening creeping sharia. Okay, I think that's overkill. Like, it's not becoming the law of the land or stuff like that, right? So that's an exaggeration, okay? But Islamic values are seeping into European culture and having an effect on society. But they're not taking over. Like, they're not dominant or something like that, but they are major influence in Europe. So I guess if they are... So, I, I mean... You could maybe what you're saying, you could say that to somebody who's not being consistent about these things. Like they wouldn't call out the Islamic ones and they're calling out Hindu for ones. But we call them all out. So we're not being mm -hmm. hypocrites here. I mean, if, I could see if, how yeah. someone could say maybe like the, seeping sounds so insidious, but just talking mm, about that there are, but, but are the negative influences thing, so, that are happening. Like, okay, but, of course, there are influences across the world. That's like, yeah. Okay, here's here's why I see somebody might be the de defensive about it, okay? There is with Hindus, we don't have anti-Hindu bigotry as common as anti-Muslim bigotry. Where? In Europe. In Europe. Okay. Or in your or in you in North America and Europe. Okay? So the concern is that even if you're talking about values and ideas, the language, the insidious language, might be picture, might be painting a demonization of the people, like because of the history that we have. Like imagine how ins insidious this would sound if we were talking about Jews, right? Just with like major red flags here. But I think like in context, it might sense why some we were concerned about some of these the languages that we use about some of these more than others, right? Because mm -hmm. we are talking about a background of, um, we're just, we're not saying these words in a vacuum. We're saying it knowing that there's a, a, a culture of violence, I guess. But then the Hindus could also say that, well, maybe Europeans haven't, well, we, we, we feel about the same thing coming from maybe Muslim communities. And now that the Muslim communities are, widespread in UK or for example, or in North America, we might be concerned about. <coughs> I think it's a genuine concern. Maybe it's a genuine concern. Maybe you could say the same things with the same message um, in a way that is less likely to be used as demonization as people. I don't know if seeping, do you think seeping is like has that? Like you think influence would be more yeah i think you're right yeah i changed my mind right now i think it would be more responsible to say influence instead of seeping because it's just the the way you're talking about it maybe it would be used as a, but we say that about toxic cultures and religions all the time i honestly don't know what do you think I, mean, I don't it's just something to think about because i i like to look up the opinions of people who would say that the way that we talk about it is hindu phobic and given that we're covering okay. it, and this is like the response from the Hindu American Foundation, they think it's basically it's xenophobic no and Hindu phobic. Interesting to think about. Okay, so here's for example, nobody would co be concerned if we said that about. Oh wow, we got a major super chat. We'll get wow. Okay, just yeah. Okay, um, we will respond to that soon. Nobody would be concerned if we said that Christian, toxic Christians believe are seeping into American politics, okay? They're like, nobody would be like, oh, you're being, I mean, not nobody, some people will, but like no serious person would say this is Christian phobic. But maybe it's because in the United States, we don't have 
anti-Christian violence, for example, right? Anti-Christian bigotry. Maybe saying Christianity is seeping into politics would be as irresponsible if you had said it in Egypt, I don't know, or somewhere else. Like maybe you have to be more... Maybe you have to be more concerned about the language you use, depending on where you, where you're within what context you're talking about. But then now, if that's the case, then when we're on YouTube, what the hell do we do? Okay, because then you don't like well, what context do I have to be concerned about now? We have an international audience. We have Americans. We have UK. So we should we should we not use any language that could demonize a group of people based on all cultural? backgrounds and contexts like that oh, that's would be, literally um, impossible to cater to that would be yeah okay so you just have to understand when it's on social media at least we're talking about ideas and we are not trying to um encourage any form of demonization of people and if we do that if you think we're doing that we'll try to keep an open mind on your concerns about it i think that's the most responsible thing we could do right we're not talking about demonizing people. We're talking about the toxic effect of ideas and cultures. Mm -hmm. But even when we're talking about ideas and cultures, even if we, the way we are talking about it, if you think it's having a toxic effect, we'll try to pay attention to it and adjust accordingly. Yeah, I mean, like I'm a very self-reflective person, so I do genuinely think about these things. Yeah, I think that's the best we could do. Mm -hmm. Um. Um, we got a super chat. I don't know, 2,000 rupees. I understand that, guys, I understand that if you convert this, you might think like, oh, that's nothing. But no, within, in India, this goes a long way, I think. Oh, my right? God. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, thank so you so Vish much. But I know wait, wait, Vishwa Kumar so gave us a 2,000 rupee super chat. Thank you so much, Vishwa. Amazing. Thank you. Amazing. And he said, Thank I might not attend Atheist Republic news for the next four to five months as I'm preparing for my further studies. Well, best of luck with that. Your channel has been very interesting and informative. Love you all. Say, stay safe and happy AR News team and viewers. Peace. By the way, Vishwa Kumar is actually my pseudonym, which means son of the universe. Ooh. Well, thank you Brilliant. so much, Nishwa. And I'm wishing you all the best in your studies. Good job hitting the books. Okay. We like that. And uh, go forward in the world and do good things. Accomplish great and things. Thank, and thank you so much for your very generous super chat. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. That's very sweet. And oh, yeah. Okay. We're looking, we'll, we'll, we'll keep an empty seat for you when you come back. Oh, someone in the live chat who was uh, blasting us from for spreading bigotry said, "Thank you, guys. You gave me hope again." Oh, thank you. Hmm. Yeah, let's try. We're not okay. We're not trying to be, you know, we're really trying to be um, as kind as to people as we can. Like, right? and also sometimes, like, if we joke about certain groups of people, it's because our audience are from there and they kind of likes us to poke around, fun around a little bit. But if anybody genuinely gets upset, um, we try to adjust for them accordingly, okay? Um, or at least let them know that this is what we do here yeah. so that they have an understanding. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.